Invasive zebra and quagga mussels are trouble. They colonize together in large numbers, clogging pipes in municipal and raw water systems. They attach themselves to boats and trailers and are then able to hitchhike great distances over land to new water bodies. They are incredibly efficient filter feeders. As they consume large amounts of plankton, they can actually transform aquatic ecosystems just due to their sheer numbers. I'm Mark Bluen. I'm the Dive Safety Program Manager for the U.S. Geological Survey. And uh, we're here today uh, putting on a workshop uh, to help show folks how to do safe searches for Dreisinid uh, zebra mussels and quagga mussels. These are filter feeders. So what they do is they suck up all these things out of the water so that valuable phytoplankton, the first part of that food chain, they take out of the water, they filter it out. So there's profound effects on the rest of the food chain. So the little zooplankton, the little critters that eat the phytoplankton, and the little fish that eat those, and the bigger fish that eat the little fish, it, it really has a, a profound effect on that food chain. It's not something we see right away. In the late 1980s, zebra and quagga mussels made the trip to the Great Lakes region from their native range in Eastern Europe as stowaways aboard commercial ships. They traveled in their larval stage within the ballast water tanks below deck. Once established, they subsequently spread to new water bodies via boats and other pathways. Lake Erie is an example. Back in, in the late 80s, you could barely see your hand in front of your face in most of the areas of Lake Erie. It was really pretty cloudy because of this, these uh, algal blooms and phytoplankton. Uh, now, what we see, Lake Erie has cleared up one foot per year since the introduction of the zebra mussels. So they're very effective filter feeders, but the problem is that's important things that they're filtering out as far as the food chain. To date, zebra and quagga mussels have not been found in the Pacific Northwest, but recreational boats with mussels attached are periodically intercepted by inspection stations. Places like this in the Columbia River here, there's a great deal of amounts of food for these exotic mussels to, to come into, so we're really very worried about uh, waterways such as this. It's a huge body of water and uh, it's something that uh, once you have them, there's no way to get rid of them really. Prevention is the first defense against aquatic invaders and many efforts are in place to keep invasive mussels out of the Northwest. But as a backup strategy, the 100th Meridian Initiative's Columbia River Basin team has developed a rapid response plan. If mussels are detected early, the potential for eradication will be much more likely. However, just like with planning for other emergencies, Implementing the plan will be much more successful with practice. Five practice exercises for hypothetical mussel infestations have taken place in waters of Montana, Oregon, Washington, and Idaho between 2008 and 2011. Field-based and tabletop exercises help team members to isolate problems in the plan and increase preparedness. I'm Noah Adams with the U.S. Geological Survey out of Columbia River Research Laboratory. And in 2010, I wrote protocols for procedures to conduct underwater searches for invasive mussels and this year as, as follow-on activity we're actually conducting training sessions out in the field a combination between classroom and hands-on experience this is part of our hands-on experience today the idea is to familiarize divers with searching for something as small as a quagga mussel what we have here is we've got uh, several different stations we've got a dock uh, station that simulates an opportunity for them to, to search a dock and look for quagga mussels on a dock. And we have an open water search station that's going on in the background. Uh, and that teaches them how to, to use a pivot station that allows them to search a more open water area. So the, the need here, the idea is to train as many divers as we can in preparation for the potential need to have a number of divers available throughout the plumbing space to respond to calls to go out and look for mussels and verify that mussels are present. Not just divers can help spot a new mussel invasion. Everyone has the ability, so the more eyes looking, the better are odds to avoid a nightmare. These freshwater shellfish typically have a dark and white, zebra-like pattern on their thin shells and seldom grow larger than one inch. Zebra mussel shells are D-shaped, while quagga mussel shells are more rounded. We really have just one shot at stopping an invasive mussel introduction. If not contained immediately, the problem can quickly get out of hand. Once zebra and quagga mussels are established, 
They're usually in the system for good.